you know, all my life, yeah, I've been thinking of, um, 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 what's his name? Um, Dizzy Rascal, because my name's Naomi, and I'm in love with him. And, um, I used to watch football every Saturday. Let me stand here, not wanting to be here, not wanting this to have happened. And yet as we are here, we are comforted by the truth of your gospel. That through Jesus Christ, death is swallowed up in victory. As you can see, Zach is no more with us. When he died, it felt like a bomb had gone off in our family. The fact that he was gone was just, it, it ripped us apart. Operation Forgiveness is an early intervention knife crime initiative. We go into schools and we tell our family story, which is a, um, a story of my wife's youngest brother, Zach, who was stabbed and killed in 2010. We go in, we, we share about these negative ripples that went out from his death, and then we talk about forgiveness and we talk about how we turn those negative ripples into positive ripples. And we give the young people an opportunity themselves to actually forgive so they practically understand what forgiveness is, they then have an opportunity to forgive someone in their life, and it is it's a powerful thing to see. Hold your hand up high, and this is your time to say, you know, I need to forgive. I want to forgive. I don't want this unforgiveness to change my life. I don't want it to affect me. The children seemed so, so engaged. It, it, was, it was lovely to see the, the sort of intensity in which the, they were listening and, and learning and really reflecting on, on what was being said. It's really hard to forgive people. So you see like some, somebody like pushed you on accident. Now that I've heard, heard this, I should forgive them. A lot easier. Knife crime in London has been getting worse over recent years. It's something that people need to be aware about. And it's, you know, it's something that can be prevented. Serious youth violence can be prevented. You guys have the power to stop knife crime. To actually stop it. There's a limit to what we can do. There's a limit to how many schools we can go into, how many young people we can reach. The vision for Operation Forgiveness is to train and equip groups and individuals to go into schools to go and deliver Operation Forgiveness. We are going to train volunteers from churches to go into their local schools so that thousands of young people will get to experience Operation Forgiveness for themselves. The long-term vision is that Operation Forgiveness goes into all schools across London. Many of your young people are suffering. If young people can learn to talk to people, our world will be much better than, than it is now. You don't have to let the pain build up so much that you then have to go and hurt somebody else. There's another option, and that's what we're seeking to do, to show them that there's another option. Forgiving and having that forgiving attitude is, is so important, not to see young people, not just to someone that might be involved with the knife crime, but to everybody. It's a privilege to be a part of this and to see it and to, to witness the, this, what happens within their lives. One, two. My check one, two. Are they all check one, two? Um, yeah, man, good evening, everybody. It's, it's a real honor to be here, um, particularly at this church. My mom used to do different things at this church. I always used to find her in this church doing crafts and arts and stuff like that with, with people. So, um, yeah, man, it's a, it's, a, it's a privilege to be here. My name is Jason O'Shea. I, I'm a missionary. I work for London City Mission. Um, as you've seen from the video, um, our family gone through that tragedy. Uh, my wife's younger brother, now he's the youngest of eight. That was mommy's baby. That's her youngest of eight. Um, she describes herself as her as best friend and, and tragically she lost him. Um, five boys chased him outside the school and they chased him running in the wrong direction and they chased him. And, and, and there's children in here so I'm careful with my language but he, he's, not, he's not here anymore. Um, now, what happened is, is these boys that were arrested and um, there was a long court case and they got adjourned 
and, and the court case continued. And they were laughing and joking throughout. They were, you know, all their family are in the, in, the, in the dock and everything, and they're laughing and joking, showing signals. They obviously thought it was not a big deal and they were going to get away. Or certainly that's what they demonstrated. Um, but during that time, mum had recently um, become a Christian, um, and she just couldn't hate these boys. And she was struggling with herself, like, how can I not hate them for what they've done? They've took my, my, my youngest away from me, and how can I not hate them? But she struggled with this, and she came to a point that she realized that, no, I, I need to forgive them. I need to forgive them. During the court case, when there was no sorrow, no remorse, just laughing and joking, during the court case, when they're showing all the evidence, and you, you, you have to imagine that in your own mind because the children in here, they're showing all the evidence, they're showing what, during that time, Mom was able to forgive, and she came to the point of forgiveness. My wife, and you're going, to be, you're going to be surprised, an old man like me can get a pretty young girl like that. I'm a wife. She looked younger than she is, but that's my wife. My wife had a different, she had recently become a Christian as well, and, and she thought to herself, you know, okay, I know as a Christian I'm supposed to forgive, but not for something this big. God would not expect me to forgive the boys that killed my little brother. I'm supposed to protect him. He wouldn't, you know, I, I can't forgive. No way, I hate them. I'm not forgiving. Time went on and she became bitter and she became cold. And one day, her daughter hugged her. The girl was about, about I always give a different age, you know, because I, I can't remember. It's like three or four at the time and she hugged her. But my wife distinctively recalls that she felt nothing. She never felt love. You know when a child hugs you and you feel that, even if they're annoying, you feel that, that love. She never felt anything at all. She didn't feel it. And it was at that moment she realized that if she continued with all this unforgiveness, all the bitterness, all the vengeance, all the anger, and all these things that come from unforgiveness, if, if she continued with that, her child would grow up with no love, and her child could end up becoming somebody who could, who could take somebody else's life. And she knew from that point she needed to forgive. And she started a journey, and it was indeed a journey. And she went through this journey, and she has stand there today, as she, as she does, every time we go into a school, every time we talk in public, and she would say, I, I have forgiven those boys. And they, they, they wrote to the boys to tell them, we have forgiven you, and to explain why. It's a deep story. We believe in Romans. I believe in the Bible. I'm a Christian. Any Christian in here? Just put your hand up if you're a Christian. I believe in the Bible. And the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. What good can come from this? What good can come from Zach not being here? But God is not a liar. Good must come. So those negative ripples that have gone out from his death that affected so many people, those negative ripples have, have been stopped in their tracks and they've been turned around to become positive ripples. I was in my 40s, I'm in my 50s, right? I was in my 40s when I learned what forgiveness really meant. Well, I learned, I became a Christian about 20 years ago and I, and, and I knew that Jesus had forgiven my sins and in my mind they've just been blotted out, right? It's just true, and they're gone. But in my mind it's like they just evaporated. I didn't, I didn't really understand the consequence. There was a consequence, and there is a consequence for our sin. Jesus took on the consequence. He paid the penalty for our sin. And it was that realization that it didn't just get blotted out and I'm forgiven. Jesus paid for it. He purchased it with his blood, and he exchanged his righteousness with our unrighteousness. So we can be right before God. So when you feel bad and you don't feel good about yourself and you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm a sinner, I've done wrong and that, remind yourself, Jesus done paid for that. And he done took it off of you so you don't have that anymore. This is a Baptist church, right? Amen. Amen. All right, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we, 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 we I have a, the privilege of doing this. We do this full time. And we go into schools and we, we share our story. Mum will sit there until year six, so we're talking that young, you know, we have to go into. Prevention is better than cure. We're going into year five and year six. We're now focusing on year six. And mum will sit there. They will see a video of that growing up. They don't know why we're there. Then the penny starts to drop and they realize, whoa, whoa, he's, he, he's dead. And mum will sit there and she'll tell the story. And it, is, it will bring you to tears. And she'll tell the story of how she kissed him goodbye the night before, how he went to school, and she got a phone call, all the way through to the journey to the hospital, to her passing out and then coming around and being laid on a stretcher next to him and then him being pronounced dead. It's horrific. And she'll tell the story, and my wife will tell the story. She's at work, she got the phone call, she had to make her way to the hospital, and they kept getting the wrong turning and this, that, the other, and she got the call, and someone screamed on the phone, and she realized he's dead. 
We then give the children the opportunity to respond to that. That's, that's, that's deep. And the truth is, we shouldn't be talking to children about murder. Your children shouldn't be hearing about murder. That should be in a movie that they're not allowed to watch. But the truth is, they are hearing about it. It does affect them. There's not one primary school that we've been into that we haven't, that we said to the children, has anybody been affected by knife crime? Or no, somebody that's been affected by knife crime, all of their hands will go up unless they recently visit, come into the country. Their hands are going to go up. So they're talking about it. And children's minds may not understand things in the way our minds do. And it's really important that we explain things to them. And we, 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 we expound and, we, and they, they get to understand. You said I had an hour, right? No? Form up, we get form up from the bus. So we, 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 we share that and we give them opportunity to respond and they write down on post-it notes how it's made them feel. It could be one word, don't care about the spelling, it could be in a different language. I just want them to write down and express how they feel. We then feed back from that. They have their break, they come back, and then we talk about the value of life. And why we as Christians, we never tell them what to believe. We use the right language. We say, we as Christians believe that God created all people in his image. So much so that every hair on your head is numbered. He knows you so well, so intimately. He put the stars in place for you personally because he loves you. And we, we, t we teach them about the value of life from a Christian perspective. The story then continues, and mom and, and, and Taylor will sit down and talk about forgiveness and their journeys to forgiveness. We unpack what forgiveness means. Forgiveness doesn't mean it's okay. Forgiveness doesn't mean that someone is allowed to continue hurting you. There must be justice. Forgiveness is to let go, to let go of the anger, to let go of the, the vengeance, to let go of the bitterness, to let go of all those things that are changing your heart. Because let me tell you, someone in here today has got unforgiveness in their heart. It could be a relative. And, you, and you, 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 you know who it is. You have unforgiveness. You're still holding on to the bitterness and the anger and, and, and all of those things. And God is saying to give it to him. You need to let go of those things because it has changed the course of your life. There's an expression that, don't, 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 you know, if, if, if you wind me up and then you touch a button, I'm, I'm gone. And we have, to, we have to make sure that we're not storing up all this anger and all this vengeance and all this bitterness within us. We have to let it out and we give it to Jesus. And, it, and so, some of us, is a journey through our life that we're, we're, it's a thing that we battle with and we go all the way through. And, and the, the Bible says in Galatians that the spirit and the flesh will be at war until we die. For some of us, it would be immediate. So you might be like my wife where you're like, you know what, Lord, yeah, I need to forgive. And you might start that journey. And I pray that someone in there does that today. I wasn't in there to preach, but I, it's, you know. I pray that someone does that today. I pray that if that's you today, that you, you, you would, with you and the Lord, would bring it to Jesus and say, Lord, forgive me for holding on to this. I need to let go. Please help me. And you might start a journey. You might deal with it immediately. I hate that. Done. It's finished. You're, you're not holding on to that anymore. But it might be the beginning of your journey, all right? So, sorry about that. This is the boss, you know. So we go into schools. Now, you heard from Tim that half of Londoners will not hear the gospel. They don't have a Christian friend. So can you imagine they're going to live and grow as your neighbors and never hear about Jesus? That's, that's no, man, that's terrible. Terrible. Us going to schools means all those children hear the gospel because the gospel is part of our story and nobody can tell us to take that out. No one will ever tell mom, I have heard your story, stop talking about Jesus. They cannot. They cannot, because it's the catalyst, it's, it's the core of the journey. And we go into non-faith schools, and every single non-faith school we've been into has invited us back. Because it's been so powerful, we've been so impactful. Every school, at least one adult will put their hand up because they need to forgive someone. And these are non-Christian people. It's so important. But we're limited. How much can we do? How many schools can we go into? We will see a few thousand children. Praise the Lord, that's amazing. But guess what? If we're able to train and equip churches, your church could then go into your local schools. Not only are you going to go into your local schools and, and, and share the gospel, not only are you going to start to prevent knife crime, you're also able to make a relationship with the school and, and build roots between your church and your local schools. Just very quickly, I want to tell you that Scotland, had, their knife crime problem was much worse than London. It's really important for people to understand that ethnicity is not a driver to knife crime. It's poverty and, and deprivation. This is proven factual, all right? It's factual. In Scotland, because I tell you, anyone from Ghana or Nigeria or anywhere in... in, in you're not going to have... Like, there's no knife crime problem like there is in London. It's not... Ethnicity is not the driver. And it's important that people are educated and people understand what is going on. The child abuse that is going on that they call county lines. What in the world? Children are being gro groomed and kidnapped and used as drug mules. How is that how still happening and, and, and the whole country is not in an uproar? It's obvious, isn't it? 
And it needs to be spoken about. It needs to be exposed. It needs to be talked about. What we're doing right now, we, we, we have put together a very beautiful, you saw the quality of the video, right? They even make me look good on the video. The video was very, I even sound good on the video. I put my best Cockney voice and everything. It was really good. The video is done. We, we have a whole video package. We want to train churches. I don't want nothing from your church. We want you to receive the training and go into your local schools. All right, that's what we want you to do. We are doing an event on the 24th. If you want to come and see what Operation Forgiveness is for yourself, all right, you can come along. It's a very, it's, it's a big distance. It's in a place called Broccoli. So you might need a visa, but you can come to Broccoli. It's, it's on um, Wickham Road, which is, which is St. Peter's Church. But all the information is on the flyer. You can come along on Thursday night, 7.30 to 9.30, and experience Operation Forgiveness. And you will have an opportunity to sign up to say, you know what, I'm interested. and I want my church to hear about this. If you're a church leader, please do come. Because you're going to be able to see for yourself and you can sign up. And it, it, it's not costing you anything. I'm not trying to enter into no nothing with you, financial agreement or nothing like that. We're saying, look, just come and, and, and we do a day's training. You hear Operation Forgiveness, you hear mum tell you firsthand personally. You now know it personally. It's affected you personally. You are then in a position to go and deliver it. If you don't hear it personally from mum, you, then you're, you're in no position. You can go and get any sad story from the internet and do it. And it will be, it will be impactful, but this is anointed. It's, it's very different. But you're welcome to come along. The flyers are at the back. So my friend Mikey P, eating a biscuit, right at the back there. Sorry, sir. He's got flyers. There's loads. But don't just take one flyer. Take some for your church. Take some for your people. Um, come along on the 24th. Experience Operation Forgiveness firsthand. Um, and then we will help you. We, we do a day's training. And, and then we can help you to get into your local schools. The first training we're doing will be for St. Peter's Church. So you can't join on to that training because we need to talk to make sure everybody's DBS check and all them kind of things. So we, we, but we will be doing that after, okay? So it'll be in the new year. So is anybody interested? Yeah, one, one person. One person. Is anybody interested in, in, in sharing the gospel with children in the local schools? Because this is such an opportunity to go in, man. It's like a, it's a key. The government have said they have to do something. So I was talking about Scotland earlier, I didn't even finish. So Scotland treated knife crime like a disease. They, they said this is, a, this is a, a public health issue, it's a disease, and they started early intervention and, and they reduced knife crime by over 60%. Why have we not done that? Our response was more stop and search and, and, and tougher prison sentence. Why in the world? Why didn't we do what we know works? And it worked in America, they got the plan from America. Why are we not doing that in London? Clearly obvious. I'm not going to them things there. So. But we need to be praying. We need to be praying for our young people. We need the support of the church. We, 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 we can't ignore this. You can't keep having meetings about serious youth violence. You can't just have meetings about it. You need to do something. Early intervention works. If you hear about an early intervention, not just Operation Forgiveness, but you hear about support it. Support it. You can, you can donate financially. All of us have to raise money. Do you know what I mean? Donate to those people. Not just us, but anybody who's doing the good works. Who's doing early intervention because it, it does work. I got way over time in it. And I, I'm working tonight, you know, so I gotta go. But God bless you guys. Thank you for your time. I'm sorry I gotta run off, but Tim is here. <laughs>